Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of generating a stone wall using common methods and also with Python to automate the process so we don't have to sculpt brick by brick or spend time duplicating around each brick in ZBrush. So the first step is to have a base mesh of your brick pattern, simple cubes you will do. Create a cube and scale it to a common size. Then you want to duplicate and snap them together. Finally, you can combine it so you can move the vertices of two bricks at the same time. Then it's a matter of duplicating it and keep creating the pattern, adjusting the width and height of the bricks. In the end, if you separate the geo, you will have each brick snapped together and with no vertices merged. You can create this pretty quickly, not sure if there's any plugin out there to do this, let me know in the comments. So right here I have the geometry to be sculpted in ZBrush. You might want to add a few divisions and especially a bevel around the hard edges, so we can subdivide it in ZBrush. You might have noticed already that we have 5 different types of bricks. One standard, another one more flat, more squared, and so on. This is because the script we're going to use will scale each sculpted brick to fit the base mesh, so we need to take into consideration any stretching or distortion it might happen to the sculpted details. That's why we have the different types of bricks. The last step is to export the bricks as an OBJ. Now in ZBrush I have already the sculpted bricks with three different variations, so we don't repeat them much. I am not going to show you how to sculpt the bricks because you're probably much better than me at that. So I have named each brick with the type and respective variant so we have an easier time in Maya. Then we just need to export out each brick as an OBJ. After exporting, drag the OBJs into Maya, this is the fastest way to load in multiple OBJs or FBX files. As I told you before, we have different types of bricks to avoid scaling issues with the script. In this case, we will need to create selection sets for each type of brick, which is pretty simple anyways. So let's load in the script. As you can see, I have the different selection sets for each type. Let's select the first type of bricks from ZBrush, so we can print out the names in the script editor. And then paste it in our source variable. I will give you an overview of the entire script later on. For now, let's see it in action. So, select the first set and execute the script. And as you can see, we have some problems. The bricks are all over the place, because I forgot to center the pivot of the sculpted bricks. Now if I run the script, everything works out as expected. If you have very noticeable repetition of bricks, you can undo and run the script again till you're happy with the result. Let's do it one more time for the second type. Replace the names of the bricks to be used. Load the selection set and run the script. What happens here is that each sculpted brick is scaled, rotated and moved to, to match the original base mesh transforms. Looks simple or that you can use just the replace objects command, but it's quite tricky to make it work in the background. Let's quickly do the same for the other types of bricks. And now we have the complete wall. The only thing left to do is to export it to ZBrush. It might take 1 or 2 minutes as it's a lot of geometry. I might have added too much geometry in ZBrush. Make sure you're happy with the result since from now on it will be baked and we'll use ZBrush to remesh it. If you've watched my previous videos on ZBrush, I have gone through the process of decimate the remesh and project the details from the Dynamesh sculpt. 
Then we just send the level 1 to Maya to do the UVs, import it back to ZBrush and project again the details from the original sculpt. Once you have your clean mesh, just export out the displacement and normal maps. This is the texturing I have so far for the wall. Really easy to set up using a base texture and creating some adjustments with smart masks. And this is how it looks rendered with the displacement and normal maps from ZBrush. So in this final part I am just going to walk you through the script and explain what each part does. The target is the selected base mesh to be replaced. The source is where we input the different variants of the sculpted bricks. Here we get the dimensions using the bounding box command of both target and source geometry. Then we pick one of the variants randomly, duplicate it. And here we just bypass the local transforms that the geometry might have and can affect our script. Now we need to compare the difference between the target and source geo so we can scale it properly. And finally scale the sculpted bricks according to the original mesh scale. Now we just need to move it to the new location. And finally we can rotate it randomly in the Y and Z so we can have even more variation. That's it guys, hope this can help you in a future project or at least that you have learned some new technique. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.